Hey there learners, Buddy here. So today we are taking a look at bug winds. We will be looking at what they are, how they form, what causes them, what the effects are, and also what impacts they have on our country. So what are bug winds? Bug winds are hot, dry winds that occur in the interior of South Africa. Now remember those two key words, right? Hot and dry. Because essentially that's what a bug wind is. It's a hot and dry wind. These winds will blow from the interior of the country towards the coast during winter months. And they typically occur from April to September. So how do these bug winds actually form? Now we'll first go through a quick summary just to gain a basic understanding and then we'll dive into this topic in detail. So bug winds will form as a result of the following combination of factors. Number one, high pressure systems in the interior of the country cause the air to sink. This high pressure system is known as either the continental high or the Kalahari high. Now continental high and Kalahari high is the same thing. It's just different names, right? So as the air descends from the high altitude areas, it warms up due to compression and this is a process known as adiabatic heating. Now fear not, I will explain exactly what adiabatic heating is. Our third point states that this dry, warm air then moves towards the lower lying coastal areas where it is felt as a warm wind. Now as you can see from this summary, in its most basic form, there's only three major steps in the formation of bug winds, right? First obviously is the Kalahari high, it's going to cause the air to sink. Then as we have the air descending, adiabatic heating is going to take place. Now as I mentioned in that point, adiabatic heating is the warming up of air as it compresses. Um, after that obviously the warm air will then move towards the coastal areas where it will be felt as a bug wind. So let's go into further detail about how do bug winds form. So the first reason for formation is due to the high pressure systems over the interior. Now obviously we know what high pressure systems are. They are areas where the air pressure is much higher than the surrounding areas. So in the interior of South Africa, a subtropical high pressure system forms. This system will be known as a continental or Kalahari high. This is a large area of sinking air that causes the atmosphere to compress and warm up. The high pressure system creates a stable environment which prevents the warm air from rising, keeping it trapped near the ground. Now the most important point that you need to know from this information is that the formation of your bug winds is going to be caused by a high pressure system over South Africa's interior. Now this high pressure system is going to trap air and it will prevent it from rising which will create a stable environment. So now we will be talking about how your air sinks and warms up. So as the high pressure system dominates, air begins to sink or descend from the upper atmosphere towards the surface. Now this is called subsidence. Now as the air sinks, it is compressed and compression causes the air to heat up. Now this is known as adiabatic heating, right? It is the compression of air and that compression is going to cause the air to warm up. Essentially, as the air molecules are forced closer together, they start moving faster which increases the temperature. And another thing to note is that the bug winds can reach temperatures of 30 degrees Celsius or more. So just to summarize this piece of information, as the high pressure system dominates, air sinks towards the surface, it compresses and it heats up due to adiabatic heating. Now this is what's going to cause the temperature of the wind or the air to rise. So for those of you that are still confused by adiabatic heating, here's a simple explanation of what it is. So before compression, while your air is high up in the sky, your air molecules are spread out and moving slowly, so the air is cool. Now as you can see in the jar on the left, those circles are going to represent your air molecules. And can you see how they're going to be spread apart, right? They are far from each other and they are moving very slowly. Now as the air sinks, it's going to move into areas with higher pressure which squeezes the air molecules closer together. Now after compression takes place, right when your air is closer towards the ground, the molecules are now packed tightly, they bump into each other more often and they move faster making the air hotter. Now as you can see in the jar, the air molecules are going to be located much closer to each other and they're going to start bumping against each other, right? And that's going to generate heat 
as you can see the color is different from the jar on the left. So now that the molecules are bumping into each other much more often, these frequent and energetic collisions are going to increase the temperature of the air because we know temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of molecules. So those of you that are actually doing physics, you're going to understand this uh, concept a lot easier. So now we will talk about the movement of the air towards the coast. So once the air has been warmed up, it moves towards the coast in an anti-clockwise direction. Since it is a high pressure system, the winds move from areas of high pressure to areas of lower pressure like the coastal regions towards the coastal low. As the air moves, it stays warm and dry because it has already lost much of its moisture while descending and warming in the interior. Now a very important point to remember is that for every 100 meters we move, the wind will warm up by 1 degree Celsius. So now we get to the end result which is a warm dry wind. The result is a warm dry wind that blows from the interior of the country towards the coast and they can last for several days. Our next point states that the warm air is very dry because most of the moisture has already been lost as the air moves across the land. This contributes to the low humidity that characterizes berg winds. Now as your air moves from a high pressure area to a low pressure area, it's going to pick up speed making the wind quite strong. Now let's quickly take a look at this diagram. So this diagram will give us a visual representation of what the entire process will look like. Now at A, you can see that the air will subside at the Kalahari High, which is obviously located um, over the interior of South Africa. Now once we get to B, we can see that the air is going to compress and it's going to then move towards the coast. Now at C, the air is then going to move down the escarpment and you can see how the colors of the arrows are going to change from dark blue to red. Now this is going to indicate the change in temperature of the wind, right from a cool wind to a warm wind. Now remember I mentioned that for every 100 meters the wind will move, the temperature will increase by 1 degree Celsius. Now we look at D, the wind has now reached the coastal low at the coast and it can reach temperatures of 30 degrees Celsius or more. So now let's look at some characteristics of this wind. The first will be that it is warm and dry. As the air is compressed, it heats up making the winds hot and dry. The next characteristic would be that it is a strong wind. So berg winds can reach speeds of 50 to 70 kilometers an hour, although they are not as strong as other winds. Another characteristic would be the direction. So they usually blow from the interior of the country to the coastal areas. And the last characteristic would be the duration of the wind. So berg winds often last for several days. So what are some environmental effects of berg winds? The first would be drought and fire risk. So the hot, dry conditions created by berg winds can lead to increased evaporation rates and exacerbate drought conditions. The low humidity also increases the risk of wildfires, especially in areas with dry vegetation. Now we know because berg winds often occur in winter, remember vegetation is going to be dry because basically the wind is hot. These areas with dry vegetation can catch a light causing wildfires. Next would be temperature changes. So areas affected by berg winds experience a noticeable increase in temperature often by several degrees Celsius which can be uncomfortable and lead to heat related stress on plants, animals and humans. The next environmental effect would be drying out of soil. So with a strong evaporation rate soils can become drier affecting agriculture and water supplies. So now, not only did we look at the effects of berg winds, we will now look at the impact of berg winds on people and the economy. So the first will obviously be health issues. So the hot, dry winds can cause discomfort to people, leading to dehydration, heat stress and respiratory issues, particularly in people with pre-existing lung conditions. The next would be agriculture. So farmers will face crop damage due to the hot temperatures and drought conditions that are intensified by berg winds. The winds may also damage crops that are sensitive to excessive heat. As we mentioned, also there's an increased fire risk. The winds will contribute to a higher frequency and severity of wildfires, which can damage properties and agricultural land. This affects communities and industries, especially those 
involved in farming and tourism. And the last will be obviously the economic costs of the winds. The environmental damage caused by bulb winds such as crop loss and destruction of property can result in economic losses. Additionally, firefighting efforts and damage control during these events lead to increased costs for local governments and businesses. So now we can clearly see that these winds are going to have a negative effect not only on the people but the environment and the economy as well. And that's basically the story of bug winds, right? That's nature's way of turning up the heat. Now I don't know if you guys and girls have ever felt a bug wind before, but trust me, it feels weird. Now if you found this lesson helpful, please drop a like and hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comment section if you have actually felt or experienced a bug wind yourself. Stay cool, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.